in May 1992, when I was still a young hitchhiker, 30 years ago, I got attacked by a French serial killer. So nine years later, in the summer of 2001, I read an article in a French magazine called Le Nouveau Détective, in which I read that many young hitchhikers had disappeared at the very same spot where that French serial killer had attacked me. I think they called it the highway of death. So here you can see the article, it's in French, but I'll explain it to you. And here's my name, Sean Ross. I was hanging around in this place at the time using the address. And uh, so here you can see the name of the magazine. It says, uh, Magazine of Inquiries, the new detective. And here's the date, October the 3rd, 2001, when that article was in it, what I had sent to them. And I think I must have been 29 at the time when it happened in 1992, being a young hitchhiker in shorts and tanned from the Corsican sun, where I just came from visiting a political gathering in Corsica. So nine years later, in 1992, I decided to write that newspaper by snail mail, long before the internet, emails, and long before YouTube. And as I like to archive things, I've always kept the article, which you can see here, in which I shortly describe what happened. The guy was well-dressed, being an engineer with public works traveling all over France. He was driving a red Renault Safran with a 75 Paris number plate. And uh, it was the very first time I saw this model Renault, which must have been released that very same month of May in 1992, which would make it very easy to retrace the creep, being one of the first owners of that motor type. And here it says, well, there was the car. And um, here it says, the Safran was launched in April 1992. And I saw that guy in May. I I'd never seen that car before. It happened on the A7 motorway on the Autoroute du Soleil, or Sunshine Highway, just under Lyon, with right on the other side of Lyon, on the A6, all these young people and young hitchhikers vanishing into thin air. So here's the A7, you see, and this is Lyon. Uh, it must have happened like around here, just before Lyon, when I, I was coming out of the south. Um, here, like he picked me up like somewhere here. I don't really remember where, it's 30 years ago, you know. And um, so here under Lyon is called A7, Autoroute du Soleil, the Sunshine Highway. And if you go like um, on top of it, over Lyon, going to the north, to Paris, like for instance, it's called the A6. And in this area, all these young hitchhikers disappeared. I think it was also in the 90s or something. Uh, I can't really recall the article. Um, yeah, must have been, because the article I wrote there was in 1992. So it must have been somewhere in the 80s, and 80s or I'll look it up for you. It's not really that important. So here, here all these people disappeared. And this creep, a, um, a picked me up here somewhere, coming uh, on the A7. So that's really near, eh? It's, it's the same area, like the, uh, and the, they call it the, uh, the highway of death. So I was picked up at the highway of death. Uh, I think I was lucky. I... So here it is, the A6 disappearances. It's, it's even in English, you know, it's so important, you know. Uh, and it happened in the 80s, the 1990s, you know, when I was attacked. And even 2000, you know, so it's still going on, eh? 
the triangle of fear. They also call it the triangle. I, I was in the triangle of fear probably. And uh, well, I never felt any fear, you know, as usual. And uh, so here's, you know, you can, there's a lot of names of, you know, young girls here, 13 years old, and oh, it's horrible. Um, so you can just punch pause and read it if you like. Um, it's maybe not that funny, eh? Yeah. So, I'll go back to the top. And, um, well, I must have looked like a harmless and naive 29-year-old young hitchhiker to him. Because all of a sudden, he put his really extravagantly huge hand on my naked thigh next to my willy. And I thought, what? You must be kidding me, mate. And I quickly had to suppress the most suitable homeros male reaction to this pervert's aggression. Because in fact, I needed to get on with the hitchhiking, needed my driver in good condition at 150 kilometers an hour behind the steering wheel. That's about 95 miles an hour. So here you can read the rest of the story I wrote to that um, um, uh, magazine uh, detective. And uh, it stopped here, like je lui ai donné. And uh, um, well, it, it was a lot larger what I wrote to them, but I only they only extracted this little part and it goes on a little bit uh, more uh, it was I, I, I really send them a very detailed uh, witness account or about what happened you know so I gave him a last chance instead you know after he uh, harassed me sexually and postponing the inevitable for the end of the ride when arriving upon getting out and I ordered him to take his fat claw of my thigh and started to bombard him with questions in order to bring the energy up to his head from down below the loins like do you do that a lot mate do you go after women too yeah do them all he said and none of them mind really none of them mind usually and it was at this very moment that I saw the huge metal bar under his seat, partly covered in a plastic bag. Well, no wonder they don't mind if you club them over their head first, I thought. Well, this was not some fragile pink list killer looking for his daddy and stolen male hormones. No, this was a monster with lots of male energy and huge hands with a metal bar under his seat Praying on Homie Ross in his shorts, hot pants, and some undefinable, invisible, but very black energy came along with this physically very strong predator. At a certain moment, when he'd realized the miscalculation concerning his harmless looking passenger, he suddenly said, I don't want you anymore in my car. I'll drop you off at the petrol station, they're coming up. And while maneuvering for the exit, but still 95 miles an hour, he made the fatal mistake. He did it again. His shit hitting my fan. And I immediately delivered a mighty left elbow straight into his ugly face, knocking his huge head, rocking backwards and back front again needing to grab the wheel as the creep was unconscious, hanging to the side of the door. Now my blood was really rushing in my veins like a white rhino from the RSA back home, inversing the roles of the victim becoming the predator now. Must admit, I never really liked the victim's role anyway, and always tried to undo that one as rapidly as can be. Then we, or rather I, made it to the parking lot of the petrol station on the motorway, which must have been the one by the name of Cerisin Duronne. Bloody Saracens again, eh? And at the end, where the restaurant was, 
I saw two motorcycle cops with shiny boots on, but funny enough, driving a van. So I thought, in case the beast next to me wakes up and goes crying for the cops, seeing his demolished head where his face used to be, then I would even become the aggressor in the eyes of justice. So I pulled the handbrake, got my gear out, yanked his keys out, served the beast of a man, two or three more therapeutic volleys, making his nasty head rock in all directions again, and try to be at the cops first. No choice, really. In the meantime, the cops were inside at the bar ordering coffee without donuts in France, and me standing in front of them with my back towards the car, holding my blooded fist in front of their somewhat surprised faces, with the car keys dangling in their faces, saying, I just got sexually assaulted by some pink list killer in the car behind. What car, they said, looking over my shoulders. Feeling quite awkward there, I turned around and he was gone. No car. So I show here all the old pictures because it's not allowed anymore to film any French cops. You go to prison if you film them because they want to hide their crimes like beating up the people of France because of all the the Berg War needle stuff they're gonna force upon us. So excuse me, it's gonna be all like old pictures of the coppers. Thus, by running away, making this sexual predator cop shy profile wise and highly prepared for all eventualities in his dark ventures, needing some reserve set of keys and somehow needing to control every step of whatever he was doing. The French cops throw me in the back of the van on the floor. Let's go to the police station in Lyon, shall we now? Then, in the centre of Lyon, they got an emergency call. Sorry, we have to drop you off here. More important things to do. Very urgent. Now, why did I come with this old story again of 30 years ago? Well, I met him again, two months ago by mere coincidence. And I'm like 99% sure it was him. I've got his name and address now. The guy is an Alsatian, so an ethnic Swissy. Here, look at this name, Carl Zero Absolu. I'm going to talk about that. Then, last month, Elvis, the Spanish fan of my videos, advised me to watch Carl Zero on YouTube, where I saw this video about the disappearances of the Route Nationale 20. Here you can see it, the National 20 near Paris, reminding me that my aggressor had a 75 Paris number plate and travelling all over France for his job. And also having the immense physical strength hanging up the corpses of his victims on some sort of hook, which apparently happened, as being told in the video. And my guy definitely had that strength and the huge powerful hands that could rip one's hand, head off or to strangle, as in this case. Last month I told the whole story to a French policeman, who is a huge fan of my videos, and at whose house I stayed last year for about a week. But nothing really happened and nothing came out of it. Here you can see a, a list of French serial killers, and they're not even all on it. You can just punch pause if you want to see it. That's <laughs> quite a lot, you know. And they're not even all on it. Oh, it's so long. Oh, I think there's some more here. 
There's a lot of nobility serial killers in it, of course, like uh, Gilles Deray. Okay, so you got the list again. And uh, I wonder why there are so many serial killers in France, because the list is really long. And it's a chilling idea how many French serial killers are still on the loose, like that beast sexual predator that attacked me. Well, for sure, all these perverts have all laws on their sides now. And nobody really seems to care in France, well, not in the least the French police, as they're all just so busy with the fulfillment of their own egos in France. Around the French town of Toulouse, 190 women have disappeared. You see that here. There is the A6 Highway of Death. You can see that here. It's all YouTube. And also the um, disappearances of the A26, another highway, another highway of death. Here, look, all the people, all serial killers. The disappearances on the National Road, the N20, and the murders on the N20. There was Fourniré, the child serial killer, here in my film, here. The Marquis Gilles Deray, child serial killer, here in my film. And he was the first general of uh, Joan of Arc, not very much a saint, I'd say. And the Marquis Gilles Deray, also featuring in this video here, together with some other aristocratic serial killers. And in this YouTube video, the case of the killer commando, there was the tough sergeant ma major paratrooper, Pierre Chanal, who liked to rape and murder his own soldiers. Until the French general wondered why there were no more men in his battalion left. And there was the, or still is, the French serial killer, Charles Sobrage, about whom there is this very chilling film on Netflix called The Serpent. Nobody really cares in France, and the Frenchies are all intensively occupied with their own egos, making it the perfect playground for serial killers, of whom 69% are pink list killers and all sorts of other perverts, which you can see here in this video here on the Ahava a video platform and here it says technically 69% of the serial killers in this study were pinkless killers. I guess Homie Ross was lucky again elbowing the beast maniac before getting clubbed over the head. The white rhino taught me that strategy back in the good old days in South Africa. The lions, of course, in this picture are the symbol of our masters, Pharaoh's aristocracy. Let's go charge them, folks. We can do it.